Auckland police and fire brigade try to save two burning boats. Three men in a boat don't know and don't seem to care that there's limits on how many muscles they can take. And a late night boat search reveals a hidden secret. Is there any more fish on board the boat? When there's a boat fire on the Waitemata Harbour, it's the Auckland Maritime Police and Parnell Fire Brigade that are called into action. And today they're on their way to Pamuir. Yeah, Roger, we're 10 to now with uh, Parnell Fire. Our ETA is uh, approximately 30 minutes over. Copy that. Uh, Harbourmaster should be on scene shortly, over. As the Deodar motors towards Pam Muir, the people on board are still waiting for more details about what they can expect when they arrive at the scene. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we'll get a separate from the Harbourmaster to find out what's going on now. It's two boats here. Right? Are, they, are they a booth together, or...? No, no. Well, we'll get a separate from the Harbourmaster, hopefully. Yeah. Actually, you and Cops with your fire guys down there, they can probably tell you. Is it, is it okay to use this up here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fire call from Parnell 251. Have you any further information from Mount Wellington 231 about this incident? But as the Deodar moves further into the Pamua Basin, the smoke from the boats is plain to see. Yeah, look at it. Yeah, yeah we've located the fire. Um, pretty, uh, pretty well ablaze at the moment, um, and it looks like they're fighting it from the shore at the moment. So we're going to try and get in a bit closer and. The hoses from the shore base crew can barely reach the burning boats, and as the Deodar approaches, there's still explosions on board. Further north, a fishery patrol is about to be launched on the Kaipara Harbour. With an area of nearly a thousand square kilometres, the Kaipara is one of the biggest natural harbours in the world, and today fishery officers Henry, Richard and Marcy will be out checking that everybody's sticking to the rules. Put on now, and uh, conditions are pretty flat today. There's very little wind, overcast day, uh, very warm today, so we should have a reasonable day today. One of the major attractions of the Kaipara is its scallops, but just six years ago, stocks of the shellfish were dangerously low. The Kuiper Harbour was closed, I think it's been open for two seasons now, but it was closed for two years, and they rolled it over for a third year. Um, in what's called a 186A closure under the Fisheries Act, where basically all the locals band together and put forward a submission to the Minister and say that their fishery is not in very good state. So they had it closed, totally closed to any um, taking, so absolutely no take for three years with the hope that the stocks would improve, and it looks like they're pretty good, for, according to the locals. How are you going? Just keep going. Sorry, just keep going. And we'll just come alongside. Have you had any luck? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh. You've got your measure in your hand, there must be some. And the locals are now reaping the benefits of the closure, with limit takes not that hard to find. What are the scallops like this year? Four. They were good at the beginning of the season. Yeah? But then they, they sort of got a bit. And flat, hey? The scallops on the Kuiper are a bit different to the East Coast ones, they're pretty flat and black. <laughs> Oh. We were just looking at the market saying boat toilet on it. Boat toilet. Oh, cool. <laughs> Poo wee. Awesome. <laughs> you can have that back. <laughs> how many's in here? Uh, 39. And you know how many you're allowed? Yeah. 20. 20 per person that's involved in the taking a case. So with the dredging, yeah. that's either pulling the dredge or driving the boat. So you've got to, yeah, they've still got to drive your boat. Oh, do they? Okay, it's not the, it's not the measuring and stuff like that, it's the actual yeah. take. As the patrol continues with the inspections, everybody seems to be sticking by the rules, and there's plenty of good fish around. Sure you want to come on board? Yeah. 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 Ye
we'll have a quick look at your catch. How are you guys anyway? All over, five, all over 500. We stand on the anchor, I think. Those are the best snapper I've seen so far. Oh, is it really? That's oh, why you're sitting good, here. Good fish. Yep. Oh, there's oh. one good hit. Nice. Nice. Awesome. But eventually the patrol comes across three men in a boat. Oh, we good luck, see? Yeah, good luck, eh? Yeah, we do. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many times. The realisation that the two fishermen have hooked each other dispels the notion that fisheries have brought them good luck, and worse was to come. Nothing on board yet. Have you got are they oysters or mussels or something? Mussels. Oh yeah. How many of those have you got? Good question actually. Each of the guys on the boat's allowed to have 50 mussels, and the fact that they don't even know how many they've got is the first worrying sign. The Parnell Fire Brigade and Auckland's Maritime Police have been trying to put out fires on two boats in the Pamua Basin, and at first, they seem to be winning the battle. Probably better from that side, eh? The crew need to get onto the green boat to reach the one on the far side. But before they can do that, they have to call the green boat down. Right out, yeah. They want to get on. You want to go on? I'll get it, yeah, I'll get it in. Tell them not to jump, I'll get them in. As Gary manoeuvres the Diodar closer, the flames on the green boat are brought under control. But almost as soon as the fire crews get on board, the water pump breaks down. Diodar water pumps got one major drawback. The only way for Gary to create pressure is by revving the engines. I'm trying to keep the revs up, JS. Yeah. I'm trying to, oh, without hitting the boat. Yeah. See, I'm trying to bring the revs up if I can. It's just a matter of trying to control the boat at the same time. With Gary struggling to deliver pressure to the hose, the crew get the fire on the green boat under control, but the one on the far side is too far gone and slips away in the tide. It's uh, gone. The vessel's gone, sunk. It's a problem with water. Fills it up and then, um, yeah, and then uh, becomes too much for the vessel and then just sinks. With one boat gone and another severely damaged, it's not been a great start to the year, but it could have been worse. Definitely uh, very serious. Um, there's a number of chemical, like chemicals within the boat, um, but also gas bottles, um, fuel, a lot of um, ignition sources in boats, so uh, when they go, they uh, definitely go. As you can see by this, it um, doesn't last long. Just lucky there's no one on board. Back up north, fishery officer Marcy is still counting the mussels collected by three fishermen on the Kaipara Harbour, and it's not looking good. How many mussels do we allow? 50. 50. 50 each. 50 each. With nobody seeming to know the rules, it's not surprising that Marcy's count reaches their limit, with half a sack still to go. There's 150, so that's what you're entitled to. And I can't even lift that back. So, what I'll do is... Just dip those back in the seat. No, I'm going to have to count oh, them up first. 50, 150, 172. There's 172 on that sack, fellas. When Richard's total is added to the one Marcy's already counted, along with some more found on the boat, these guys have taken more than twice their daily limit. What, so what we have to do now is because your, your total was 360, 
So that places you all in just over two times your daily limit? If you go three times over your daily limit, you lose everything. You will, so, so you're, you're not going to lose anything? You're not going to lose anything. So yeah, not, we'll just grab your okay. details. Just, yeah, we just weren't quite we're sure on how many we were allowed to take. To tell the truth, thought we were about more than that, more than 50. Yeah. Did you count the muscles at all? No. So, do you know the daily limit for muscles? No, I don't even know the limit for anything. <laughs> I just jump on the boat and that's us. I didn't even know there was a crude for muscles. A fisheries pamphlet will help keep the guys out of trouble in the future, but this time they're going to pay heavily for not knowing what they're allowed to take. OK, and um, as Richard said, worst case scenario, an infringement. Mm. And unfortunately, it is in the $500 category because it's more than two times. He already explained that to you, eh? Yep. Um, so in the next sort of month, you'll probably hear from us. Okay. But it's not just the $1,500 they're going to lose. More than 200 mussels are going back into the sea. We've seized the excess mussels from the guys off the boat. And uh, we just we asked them where they got them from, so we're trying to put them back where they got them from. And he told me just on the lip here, so we're just on the lip now. So we'll probably buff them over this side here. After releasing the mussels, the fishery patrol headed for home. The three men were each issued with an infringement notice of $500 for taking excess mussels. It's two nights before a full moon, and the fishing conditions are perfect. And out on the Waitemata Harbour, Ministry of Fishery Officers Jason, Carol and Markey are out on patrol. Port side. Just keep their spotlight on them, Markey, so they can't track anything over the side. How you going? Ministry of Fisheries, Ministry just coming alongside. You been out fishing today? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah? Who was fishing? All of you? Yeah, the whole four. Okay. So you're aware of your size limits and yeah. stuff? Yeah, there's yeah. so many stuff here. You got, have you got anything under there? No. Uh, no? Okay. I'll hop on board, eh? It's a nice snapper in here. Yeah. Good size gurnard. Oh, that's good. It's a good start to the night. These guys have caught great-sized fish and are well within their allowed quota. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. But not everyone is so visible on the water. We've got a little boat in front of us. Uh, no nav lights, nothing. You can barely make it out. Just the, um, just the silhouette. So uh, we'll go and see um, see how these guys have been getting on. If, uh, if nothing else, they need to be told to get some uh, nav lights on so they don't get run over. Ministry of Fisheries. Oh, you got a bit of there? Yeah. How many guys on the boat? Three. Yeah. I'll just grab, uh, I'll just grab the snapper over here and I'll have a quick count, eh? You guys counted and measured the snapper? There's no response, but silence isn't going to help these guys. What, what's going to happen, guys? Is uh, my friend here? He's going to jump on board, and he's going to pass the two bins over. Okay? All right. Yep. Okay, guys. I'm, I'm going to ask you: yep. Is there any more fish on board the boat? This is your one chance for an honest answer. Yes. Is there more fish? Yeah. Can you show me where it is, please? Oh, it's under here. Under there? Yeah. Can you lift that up, please? Okay. Okay. We're going to have to get the snapper out of here. Yeah. The three guys are probably now wishing they'd stayed at home. The two bins full of snapper had put them over their limit, but what's hidden beneath the deck could cost them their boat. And once again, is there any more fish on board the boat you want to tell me about? There's no more fish? OK. What's that there in the plastic bag? Is that more fish? Is that more snapper? Yes, it is, isn't it? Now I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you again, we are gonna look through the whole boat. Is yep. there any more fish? No. We obviously just stumbled across these guys out in the water. First, yeah, first looks where there's a load of snap on board. Well, just have a bit of a count up first, counting a measure, and then we can go from there. So we got two five three, two two zero, yeah, two six six, two one five. 
The legal size for snapper is 270 millimetres, and taking juvenile fish like these has a big impact on the future of the fishery. The plastic bag had one limit in it, being nine. They've just counted the fish from under the floorboards, and there's 34 there. And we've still got the two bigger spins to go yet, so I'm thinking we're going to be over 100 snapper here, or up around the 100 mark. With three people on the boat, the allowable catch is 27 snapper, but there's more than 100 fish here, and some of them are glaringly undersized. You've got 100 odd fish, and you still want to keep that. <laughs> What's that work out to be? Just cracked the 200 mil mark. This is what we're out here for, though. 115 snapper is the total um, that they've got here between the three of them. So we know the limit for three is 27 in total. About 13 of them are undersized as well. Hey guys, you're obviously well aware you've got lots of snapper, haven't you? Do you know the limit for snapper? Yes, you do. Okay. I'm now going to give you a directive to go back to, um, to the boat ramp that you launched from, OK? And we're going to follow you, and when we get there, we'll um, talk to you, OK? Who owns yeah. the boat? Cousin. Your cousin. But it doesn't really matter who owns the boat. The serious nature of the offence as committed by the three men mean that the boat is about to become the property of the Ministry of Fisheries. When the boat goes on the trail, I don't want you to do anything stupid about try and drive away or anything, OK? OK? What's happened today, you understand you've caught a lot of snapper, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, and you knew what the limit was, didn't you? Yes. Yes. How many, how many were you allowed? Just nine. Nine each. Do you know how many you had on the boat? Well, um... No. No. You had 115 snapper. And between the three of you, you were entitled to 27. So that's well over your limit. Thank you. Okay? It's, um, it's, uh, it's so far of your limit that I'm going to have to take your boat off you tonight, OK? So you're going to take the boat? I'm taking the boat. I'm going to unhook it off here. I'm going to allow you and your friends to go off in the truck tonight. And then I'll be in touch with you. Do you understand that? Yep. It's unfortunate it's happened, but that's, that's what happens when you've um, taken the limit of snapper that you have, OK? So if you have any wallets or any personal gear in here, I'd ask that you take it, um, take it out, take your bait with you. The men will be formally interviewed in the next few days, but for now they're going home with no fish and with no boat. It just got a bit greedy. By looks of it, the fishing was good to, uh, tonight, so... Yeah, just basically greedy. Pretty sad. It was good to catch those guys and get them off the water. Who knows how many times they've been out there and caught 100 plus fish. Uh, well, they won't be for the next few months anyway. Their boat's going to be in our compound. And they can, uh, they can go and buy the fish like most the, most the rest of us. The officers are horrified at the size of this illegal catch. It's a sad end to the night and more than 100 fish will be returned to the sea. What we're doing now is we're just going to uh, steep these fish so they sink and we're going to return them to the sea. Three men in a boat, how much fish can three men eat, you know? Um, nine each would have been ample enough for one night's dinner for the family, I would suggest, and they could have always come out again tomorrow. Uh, this is just over the top, totally over the top. It's definitely, it's a waste. You look at it like this, the, it's just all this fish basically killed for, no, for nothing in the end. The three men were charged with catching excess and undersized snapper. Two of them received sentences of 100 hours of community work and the third received 200 hours. The boat, its trailer and all the fishing gear were confiscated.